All right. So today we're going to be focusing on doors. More specifically, weather seals. So this right here is your door's weather seal. It's just a rubber you know, squishy hose looking thing that sits on the entire outer edge of the door. And it just seals up against it to keep water and wind and all that other bullshit out. And eventually it goes bad. So if you notice over here, mine has a big tear for some reason. It's been like that since I ever bought it. And when you're on the highway, wind starts coming through and it's just loud and noisy and annoying. So we're going to replace it. So I picked up a roll of brand new weather stripping. If you can go to a junkyard and find some that's still in decent condition, it can be reused. Um, and there's also a cheaper fix where you can just run uh, like nylon rope or something back behind it and it'll make it puff out more so it's a tighter fit. But mine's ripped so I might as well put some new stuff in. Now this stuff is a little pricey if you do buy it new. It's 26 bucks a roll and a roll does one door. But it just looks like this. It's got a squishy rubber part on one end and then a channel on the other where it fits inside on this this whole ridge so over here this trim panel I always keep off because it's just easier to get around and you can see how easy it comes off there's a little bit of glue but once you peel the glue it just kind of pulls out it doesn't take a whole lot of time it'll probably take more time to get it around the trim panels and removing trim panels and actually pulling it off it's rather simple though so the tricky part I think is gonna be getting around this front piece because I've never actually been able to remove it. I don't know if you can, the way that it's like wrapped back there and whatnot. So fitting it around here is gonna be hard. Uh, all the other trim pieces, they just kind of unscrew. So I'm gonna see if I can move them out of the way for the most part and get around them. So I guess we'll start removing trim pieces. They're all Phillips head screws. So I'm just gonna keep going down the line and taking all the ones up that I need to. Okay, I think we got most of the trim pieces out of the way. With all these Phillips heads and all that, you can peel all this back and get to what you need to. Peeling this back was a pain in the ass. There's no screws here, but once you pop this bottom cover up, you can kind of get this side out and just kind of work your way. Hopefully I won't have to take this one off, but if we do, we'll have to remove the seat belts and all that bullshit, so I'm hoping we don't have to do that. And then the top one, I just had one screw here. Okay, so now we should be able to get to uh, peeling this thing off. Now, um, pay attention to where the gap is. My gap's down here at the bottom, which kind of makes sense, because generally the water will collect here, and I'm not too worried about it getting into the bottom. But, I'm just kind of peel it off. Now that that limp noodle's been removed, take a look at the designs here. It's about the same. So they just got channels and stuff in there that just hold it together. All right. So when we take this one right here, we're gonna wanna install this one first because it's got this little thing that sticks out. And we're going to take the other end and trim it to length when we get the entire thing on. So, you'll just push that in there so that the ridges bite down all the way. And you got positive engagement. And you're good. And you just work your way all the way around. And obviously make sure that the squishy hose is on the outside. And just keep pushing. Working your way down. Getting around the trim is going to be bit of a pain in the ass but you just keep going really make sure it's in there you'll know okay. all right I'm gonna work my way around all this crap I'll let you see the finished product oh god damn it <laughs> all right my fucking Torx bolt went missing, so I can't take this out. It's like a T50 or a T55. 
but whatever. I just worked it in. I used a flathead on the back to try and get the um, the grip, the uh, the ridge to go on the other side, and you just keep forcing it down, and eventually it'll go on and just push the trim panel out of the way. So now the tricky part's going to see uh, if I can get the panel to go back over it. But if I can get the panel to go back on, I know everything's on there nice and tight, and you want to make sure it's really fucking on there as far as it goes. Um, at the bottom, you'll notice you have a good, you know, foot or two extra. So once you're sure that everything is uh, as tight as it can go, then you'll just take a, a razor blade or some kind of something or other and cut it so that it's even. And just fill the gap. But for now, I'm going to see if I can get all these panels to go on first before I cut it. So I want to make sure these are actually on there all the way. Okay, if you just use a little flathead screwdriver, you can pry it up in there. It'll just take it and push it in, like here. And you'll just push the rubber in and just pry it out. And you'll know when it's over the ridge. So that's all snapped up in there and good and all pushed into place and all that good shit. Okay, so... Now that we're verified that everything fits properly, now you can come down here to uh, where our brake is, and um, we'll cut it. This right here is a uh, rubber hose cutter, which makes it really easy to cut all kinds of rubber stuff, so you just squeeze on it. And there you go. Got yourself a nice clean cut. If you got one of those, use it. it makes this a whole lot easier. All right, and then I guess you just got to take this little rubber tube and stick it on in the other one. So what we'll do is we'll peel this up a little and put them in. And then we'll push it down. Okay, so after you put it all together, you just squeeze it down, make sure it's really on there good. And there you go, almost seamless. A damn good job. Okay, and then we can snap our uh, pieces back over. Uh, tighten it all down. Look at that. Good as new. Nice. Got a nice positive connection now, so it'll keep it nice and sealed. And I won't be hearing wind and shit from this anymore, so... I'd say that's a, go uh, a job well done. Cool. There you go. That's how you do yourself a door seal. On a Cherokee. Cool. You thought we were done? Well, you were wrong. Found another section that was messed up. So, since we have a good, you know, foot and a half, two feet left, let's replace that too. So this one's gonna be really easy. I'm just gonna bend this out of the way, cut it, put some new stuff in. Simple. Oh, there you have it. If I was smart enough to save the, uh, the old connector tube, I could've cut it in half and put it between these two gaps to really keep it sealed, but it's a whole lot better than what it was before. There you go. You can always make use of your, uh, you know, scraps and whatnot. Okay, now we're done. Goodbye.